Tyrannosaurus rex was more than 12 meters tall, had teeth the size of knives and jaws capable of splitting bones. Today, he is dead. This crab, on the other hand, looks like a rusty helmet with legs. He does not run. It does not impress. And yet, it has been walking along the bottom of the sea for more than 450 million years. Who do you think survived? The story of life does not reward the spectacular. Reward those who do not get in the way. To those who remain silent, do not bother, and know when to play dead, literal. Today, we will talk about them. One of the champions of the low profile. Those who do not know how to give up because they do not know what is happening either. The immortals by accident. Those who won without playing the game. Not all creatures struggle to survive. Some of them just resist, and they have done so for so long that they defy common sense. They did not evolve into greatness. They did not conquer territories. They only learned not to disappear. They are the silent witnesses of a planet that has died more than once. Let's start with cyanobacteria. They appeared about 3.5 billion years ago, when Earth was little more than a volcanic wasteland. These tiny architects of life began to release oxygen as a product of their photosynthesis. What allows us to breathe today back then was a toxic gas that caused the first mass extinction of the planet, the Great Oxidation. They killed without moving. They changed the atmosphere unintentionally. And since then, they have survived every cataclysm, without drama, without haste. They are still there, floating in lakes, in seas, in forgotten puddles. No one invites them, but they are always there. Then there are sea sponges, the grandmothers of all animals. They lack brains, nerves, everything we associate with the living, and yet they work. Their design is as basic as it is brilliant. They filter water, regenerate if broken, and in some cases can live for millennia. Some species have been found to be more than 10,000 years old. They don't hunt, they do not flee, they do not react. They just exist, and they do it very well. Now we go up a notch in complexity with the Nautilus. This spiral-shelled mollusk is a living fossil that has sailed the oceans for more than 500 million years. As the world changed, he stayed the same. Its design has not needed adjustments. Its buoyancy, its internal cameras, its vision, everything continues to work as the first day. It is as if evolution had said, perfect, next. In the same vein, there are the coelacanths. These lobed fish, distant relatives of the first terrestrial vertebrates, were thought to be extinct for 65 million years, until one was captured by accident in 1938 off the coast of South Africa. Since then, they have been spotted in the depths of the oceans, swimming as if nothing had happened. They are not fast. They are not aggressive. But their lineage has resisted more than 99.9% .9 of the species that have ever existed. And of course, the champions of extreme minimalism, extremophile microbes. They survive in conditions that would cause any other living thing to collapse. They live in sulfurous waters at more than 100 degrees, in Antarctic ice, in radioactive environments, even in space. Some may enter a state of suspended animation and wake up thousands of years later. Others thrive by feeding on rocks deep in the Earth's crust. For them, a mass extinction is just a pause in the routine. These creatures did not adapt to the world. They made the world adapt to them. And when the Earth shook, burned, froze, or went dark, they remained. They were not spectacular. They were constant. And in the history of life, that has been more than enough. There are creatures that not only survived the end of the world, they ignored him. Not out of arrogance, but because they're built for something more basic, persisting, no matter how bad it gets. When we talk about extreme endurance, we're not talking about dodging the rain or enduring a harsh winter. We're talking about creatures that have survived global volcanic explosions, asteroid impacts that darken the sky for years, acidified oceans, toxic atmospheres, and glaciations that froze entire continents. We are talking about creatures that went through the most devastating extinctions on the planet intact. From the impact that wiped out the dinosaurs to the lethal heat of the Permian Triassic. They overcame global ice ages, poisoned atmospheres, chemical changes in the oceans, and entire eras of darkness. And they are still here. 
One of the best examples is the tardigrade, also known as the water bear. It measures less than a millimeter, has eight chubby legs and a face that looks like something out of a children's drawing. But don't be fooled. This microscopic being has survived the vacuum of space at temperatures ranging from minus 200 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius at radiation doses thousands of times higher than those lethal for a human. How does it achieve this? Entering a state called cryptobiosis, it suspends its metabolism, shrinks, hardens, and wait. It can do so for decades, even centuries. And when conditions improve, simply, it is reactivated, as if nothing had happened. Then there are the delioid rotifers. Not only are they microscopic and virtually indestructible, but they have been reproducing without the need for sex for 80 million years. They are all female. They don't have males. They clone themselves over and over again, and they've done so successfully that they've colonized all sorts of extreme environments, acidic waters, frozen mud, even dry moss for years. When the environment becomes lethal, they become completely dehydrated and they pause. They can come back to life after being dry for more than a decade. Giant tube worms from the ocean floor are also a rarity. They live next to hydrothermal vents in complete darkness, where the water reaches boiling temperatures and is saturated with hydrogen sulfide, a toxic gas for almost all life. But they thrive there thanks to an alliance with bacteria that use chemical compounds from water to generate energy. They do not need light, oxygen, or food as we know it. They literally transform poison into life. And if we talk about longevity, the prize goes to the Greenland shark. It can live more than 400 years. One of the specimens studied was born before the French Revolution and keeps swimming. It grows barely an inch per year, moves slowly, hunts silently, and seems to be made for only one mission, to last. There are also lobsters. Although they are not immortal in the strict sense, they have an enzyme called telomerase active throughout their adult lives. This enzyme repairs DNA and prevents cell deterioration, which in theory allows them to grow indefinitely until something external, such as a disease or predator, interrupts their longevity. Each of these creatures doesn't just defy expectations, it challenges the very definition of what we mean by life. Because for them, the end of the world is not a traumatic event. It's just another Tuesday. Surviving a mass extinction is already a feat. Do it five times. It's almost disrespectful. One of these veterans of the apocalypse is the horseshoe crab. It has been around for more than 450 million years. It saw the extinction of trilobites, survived the Permian-Triassic event that wiped out 90% of marine life, withstood the impact that wiped out the dinosaurs, and almost nothing changed. Its helmet-like body, rudder-stiff tail, and blue blood make it a living anomaly. But it's not here by aesthetic design. It's here because it works. Their blood detects toxins with such precision that today it is used in laboratories to test vaccines and medicines. And yet, his greatest achievement remains this never to have left. Crocodiles also saw biological empires fall without batting an eyelid. They appeared more than 200 million years ago, just before dinosaurs took over the planet. And when they disappeared, the crocodiles? No. The reason? A combination of ultra-efficient metabolism, the ability to remain immobile for hours, even days, and a natural armor that discourages any attempt at predation. During the Cretaceous extinction, when temperatures collapsed and the sky darkened, many animals perished from lack of food. The crocodiles just stopped moving, and they waited. Sharks, on the other hand, are the definition of, if it ain't broke, don't touch it. They have been swimming in every ocean on the planet for more than 400 million years. They survived the late Devonian event when the seas lost most of their oxygen. At the end of the Permian, when almost everything living died, they were still there. Its secret is a lethal combination of efficiency and simplicity. Its cartilage skeleton, its sensory ability to detect electrical impulses, its teeth that are constantly regenerating. The shark does not evolve into something more complex and because enough is enough. There are also primitive amphibians, such as some salamanders and newts. They have no armor, no sharp teeth. 
but they have something that few can match, the ability to regenerate, and that on a planet that collapses from time to time is no small thing. Some can reconstruct entire limbs, internal organs, and even nerve tissues. During the Triassic or Jurassic extinctions, this ability likely allowed them to withstand injuries, disease, and extreme conditions that wiped out others. These creatures didn't need to conquer the world. They just had to put up with it. And in the story of a planet that resets itself over and over again, the real champions aren't the ones who get there first. They are the ones who are still here when everything else is gone. Being immortal, at least on the geological scale, is not a superpower. It is a slow sentence. Because to last that long, you have to give up a lot of things. None of these creatures have any big ambitions. They don't build empires, they don't develop culture, they don't dream, they live in the minimum, the essential. And perhaps that is why they have lasted so long. The price of immortality is absolute simplicity. Don't take risks, not standing out, not changing, except when there is no other choice. Evolution, in its most austere version, does not reward spectacularity, rewards silent endurance. Some of these species have been here before trees existed, or flowers, before the continents separated. They have lived in silence as the earth split, burned, and froze, and they will continue to do so, even after our extinction. We like to think that we dominate this planet, that we are at the top. But in the real history of Earth, we are the newcomers, the beta version, an experiment that has not yet stood the test of time. As we build cities, satellites, and networks, there are creatures that only wait, that they have already seen others come with glory and vanish into the dust. Because perhaps the secret is not to conquer the world, but to learn to resist it. The Titans fell, the giants died, they don't.